Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Aosta Valley in Italy. And as you can see here in Italy, it's pronounced Valle d'Aosta. But since I'm American, I'm doing my whole series in American English or though technically it starts with V. In American English it starts with A. Host Valley is up in the northern part of Italy. And as you can see by this map, it is absolutely dominated by the Alps. Pretty much this entire region is the Alps. Pretty much. Including some very Famous mountains. I'm going to lean in close to the map here. Make sure I've got all of that. We have Mont Blanc. <laughs> it's hard to read. I'm kind of far from the map right now. Mont Blanc is over here. This is the highest mountain in Western Europe and sits on the border of France and Italy. Then on the border of, let me make sure I've got it right there. On the border of Switzerland and Italy is the Matterhorn. Very, very famous mountain there. Also, Monte Rosa would be right here. Is that where it is? Monte Rosa is right there. Monte Rosa is it? right here, I think. Right there. Very hard to see amongst the mountains there. But uh, not all of the big, high, famous peaks are located on borders. We have over here, it's right there, is Gran Paradiso. You can see it has its own national park right here. So the valley in the name runs through here. You can see they've built a major road with a big tunnel here, the St. Bernard Tunnel going into France. A very deep cut valley and that's where we have the town of Aosta right there. And this place is incredibly scenic. It's so beautiful. I can't wait to show you on Google Earth, but let's get into its history first. The first people who lived in the valley here would have been ancient Celtic tribes and later ancient Gallic tribes. And the most prominent tribe would have been the Salasi. And they were conquered by the Romans in the year 25 BCE and named the region after Augustus, which is where we get Augusta. In or by, I should say, by 1031, this region was controlled by uh, the Savoy family, I suppose. The, the duchy there that was in their name. And a very famous fort was built there called Fort Bard. And over the years, the region went back and forth between Savoy and France, even though they were all French-speaking, so to say. Um, many, many times the French came over to claim this area. It was went back and forth for a long time. Uh, the most famous one being Napoleon, who came in and invaded the majority of Italy, including this area. But in 1861, very pivotal year, it was part of um, Sardinia, actually. And if you're thinking, isn't Sardinia an island in the Mediterranean? Yes, it is. But it was part of Sardinia at the time of the unification of Italy. All of the kingdoms and city-states coming together to make one country. So since it was part of Sardinia, it joined the new country of Italy. 
it would have gained autonomy in 1945 because of its uh, very special predilection of French speakers here because it's very close to France and like I said was uh, conquered by France many times went back and forth as I said so the majority of people here do speak Italian but French is also understood and spoken by people here as well so it, it's an autonomous region within Italy and uh, I actually saw some news about Ost Valley about a week ago so I'm filming this in December 2023 it can Concerns this town here of Servinia, it's called. So historically, you can see here on this map even, the town was called Le Bruy. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that. Um, but a French speaking town. And it was changed to Servinia by none other than Benito Mussolini, who wanted to make this region more Italian all about that nationalism. So last week of me filming this, they officially changed the name back to Le Bruy. Uh, because, you know, it's kind of a problematic name. Their Italian name, right? Uh, the issue is that all the, like everything in the town has Servinia attached to it, including the big ski resort here, the so Servinia ski resort. So it looks like all the things that are called Servinia are just going to stay the same, but the town is going to have its original French name back. Very interesting. But in a nutshell, that is the history of Ost Valley. It's a bit of a long convolution. What I want to do is to show you this place on Google Earth. So let me pull out my tablet. This is one of the few regions of Italy that does not have any UNESCO World Heritage sites, believe it or not. Let me see. I just got a new case for my tablet. And something about it um, turns itself off. I'm not sure how. I'm going to pull this back so you can see a little more of the tablet. I'm nice and zoomed out so you can see where we are exactly. Let me zoom out even more. So you can see the rest of Italy, so you can see where Ost Valley is in proximity. So it's way up here in the northern part of the boot, right? And you can see the huge Alps from way up here. Very, very distinct mountain range. Still very glaciated some parts, especially on Mont Blanc, which is why it's called Mont Blanc, which means White Mountain. Let's take a look at it. Mont Blanc. Big, beautiful mountain here. Absolutely gorgeous. Now here you can see the, the Alps look like in the background of these quaint little Italian towns. Absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Always snow camp at the pie. But let me show you some other famous mountains, particularly the Matterhorn. If you've been to Disneyland, you recognize the Matterhorn. I've ridden on it many times myself. Very distinctly shaped mountain. It's very recognizable. Actually, you know what's really cool? Let me, sorry that my hand is like covering the tablet. Like I said, I'm at an awkward angle. If you put Google Maps in 3D, you can really see its shape from above. Look at that. Incredibly distinct mount, especially from the Swiss side. I think the Swiss side is the more famous side. But you can still see the big old peak from the Italian side. How neat is that? 
there's blues if any right there I haven't looked at the slideshow of it let's see if there's anything we can see Cervinia apparently is the Italian name for the Matterhorn. Let's see. Oop. Very cool little ski town. It's pretty much, from what I read, that's all that really goes on there. It's a little ski resort. It's pretty. But yeah. Actually, what I meant to show you, I got carried away, was to show you the slideshow of the whole area itself. So you can see some really pretty pictures here of the town of Owusta. Very little quaint town, isn't it? Very beautiful. And of course, very snowy and cold in the winter. And bursting with flowers in the springtime. I love this building here. I love that artwork. That's so neat. Look how thick that snow is. And I love this arch here. There's lots of Roman ruins still in Augusta. Lots of little remnants of many different time periods that touched this little valley in the Alps. Let's see what else we've got. I want to show you this valley in 3D. Here we go. So you can see all these big craggy mountains up here. And there's the valley. A very big one compared to all the other little valleys you can see here in the mountains. Now this is a place with a lot of really cool slideshows on Google Earth here. Pretty much any place. I'm trying to make it 2D again. There um, has some neat slideshows, but it does get a little repetitive, so I'm going to tell you that you should go around and play on the various slideshows here, but I'm going to end it in the National Park here, or Gran Paradiso. You can see all the pretty little glacier lakes there. So, so beautiful here. You can imagine the incredible hikes you could have. But nevertheless, I'm going to end it here. Like I said, there's so many cool slideshows to show you, but they all pretty much just look as beautiful as this. And I'm not going to sit here and show you the same pictures over and over again for half an hour. So please go on Google Earth and play in this beautiful little region all on your own. I encourage you to do so. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. And uh, next we're going to go look at even more alpine mountains. We're going to head up the border into Switzerland. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss I'm going to show you probably one of the most iconic buildings in the Alps. If you haven't seen it before, you don't want to miss it. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a good, good